Hi, my name is Dr. Rayshon Ray, aiming to speak truth to power, and this is my daily thought. We have third world country conditions in the United States. In October of 2016, Syrian refugees reported um, that the conditions of living in St. Louis were worse than living in, uh, in camps, in war camps, in Jordan and in Syria. They were calling uh, overseas to Jordan and Syria, telling their relatives not to come to the United States. They would show images and videos of bug infested homes, of mold, of uh, water conditions, of places not having electricity, um, and also that they were afraid to actually go out because of, the, because of the decay of certain parts of the city, as well as their potential exposure to violence. Now, I think about this in the context of uh, Dr. Douglas Massey, um, Doc, Dr. Massey, Doug Massey and uh, Dr. Nancy Denton's book on American apartheid, where they talk about uh, that there are places in the United States, or essentially that the United States in many respects operates as a form of racially segregated apartheid, similar to what we've seen in South Africa, or what we typically frame as being part of South Africa. These sort of neighborhoods exist in the United States. And for a lot of Americans, um, people haven't ever been to these types of neighborhoods. But for those of us who have, we know what it's like to live in those types of neighborhoods. Because if your home looks like that, and it's perceived that some kind of way that people who live there are doing something to it, they, they, these places were like this long before um, these people were there. And so if people's property or someone else's property, because most of the time people are renting, look like this, then you can imagine what the schools look like. You can imagine what the streets look like. And it's perceived that residents of those, of those places are supposed to take care of that. But if you're renting, then you expect for someone else to keep the place up. Um, if you're paying taxes, you expect for people to be able or for employees of the city or county to clean the streets. You expect to have uh, proper lighting. Um, at schools, when you're paying taxes, you expect that your children are going to be able to get adequate forms of education. So, I mean, as we think about the holiday season and we think about the fact that as bad as uh, people are talking about they don't want Syrian refugees in the United States. Well, I mean, the thing is, you got to remember, America is always taking on refugees, but it's where we place these refugees at that becomes problematic. And when you're putting them in places where they would rather go back to places where there are wars breaking out. That tells you how bad it is for certain citizens living in the United States. And these just, for the most part, just happens to be uh, African-American citizens living in St. Louis. But we could also look at <clears throat> Baltimore. I mean, we could look at other cities where we see this type of, this type of neighborhood decay that has roots in the way that discrimination and racism is operated in our society to redline or restrict people to be in one place where they don't get access to the same source of resources. So, you know, as always, conversations matter like Black Lives and Books, and I hope this has sparked one. You know, I hope that we think about not just adopting a child to give some toys during the holidays to help our privileged kids feel that they're contributing to society and giving back and doing some type of community service, but that we really think about ways to allow kids in other neighborhoods to have equitable opportunities because that's something that right now that simply does not exist in the United States.